Welcome to the Raised with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day where the life of Jesus meets yours. We've got your daily Bible reading for February 11th, 2019, looking at the second portion of Luke chapter 23. Beginning in verse 32, there were others also, two criminals, led with him to be put to death. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified him there with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Dividing his garments among them, they cast lots. The people stood watching. The rulers with them also scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if this is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. An inscription was also written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged insulted him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answered, and rebuking him said, Don't you even fear God, since you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. He said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. All the multitudes that came together to see this, when they saw the things that were done, returned home, beating their breasts. All his acquaintances and the women who followed with him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things. Behold, a man named Joseph, who was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, He had not consented to their decision and their deed. Joseph from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, was also waiting for God's kingdom. This man went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. He took it down and wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a tomb that was cut in stone where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was drawing near. The women who had come with him out of Galilee followed after, and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. But on the Sabbath day they rested, according to the commandment. This is the word of our God. And here we have the death of the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, eternal God, and Jesus Christ, God incarnate, God in the flesh. When you see Jesus, you see God. And right here, he lays down his life for you and for me. It's worthy of a pause, worthy of a moment to contemplate the price that our God paid for our salvation. So I ask you to consider five key questions. These five key questions from Pastor John Hine presented at the Multisite Conference back in November, as well as elsewhere. And they're not... They're not rocket science, but we need to think them through for ourselves. The first one, do I believe hell is incomprehensibly horrible? The second, do I believe that I deserve to go to hell? The third, do I believe heaven is unfathomably wonderful? The fourth, do I believe Jesus paid an immeasurable price to keep me out of hell and get me into heaven. The fifth, do I believe that God knows absolutely everything about me and yet loves me personally and unconditionally? The answer of all five, of course, is yes. And I would add a sixth, do I believe that this Jesus actually gives me the forgiveness of sins in word and sacrament and nowhere else? Those six questions together focus us in on the reality of punishment that Jesus has saved us from, the incomprehensibly horrible hell 
that we deserve, Jesus has rescued us from. The place that he has rescued us for, the unfathom the unfathomably wonderful, immeasurably immeasurably expensive place of heaven. And the way that God gets that to us and God's interaction with us. The fact that even though even though God knows our sin, at the same time, God has chosen for the sake of his Son in the flesh, Jesus Christ, God has chosen to continue to distribute his forgiveness to us in word and in sacrament. And as a corollary to that, the fact that the God who knows everything about every person has only chosen to make his grace known to us in word and sacrament. That you don't find God in, in the rainbow. The rainbow is just a reminder of God's promise to not destroy the world in the flood. You don't find God in your personal emotions because emotions change and those are just part of being human. You find God in his word. You don't find God in your human reason, as if to say this is a God that we can figure out. Ephesians chapter 3 describes the realities of God and God's grace as mysteries. Mysteries, that is, things that cannot be understood from human reason, but must be revealed by God himself. And, as a corollary, mysteries that God has chosen to reveal to you and to me, and through you and through me, his church. And so we look at what Jesus says here. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And when he says to you and to me, Father, forgive them too, for they don't know what they are doing. And when they do know what they are doing, Lord, use your law to convict them and bring them to repentance and back to that attitude of faith. And his words to the thief next to him, Assuredly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. What, what a comfort, what a comfort that this man wouldn't have to languish on the cross for three, four, five, six, seven days in pain and agony, but that that very day before the sun went down, he would be in heaven. And so what happens when Jesus says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit? He bows his head, he gives up his spirit, his body remains on the cross, his soul departs to be with God in heaven, until that third day when his soul and body would be reunited within the tomb, his body would come back to life, what we call the vivification, um, Jesus' body coming back to life. And on that third day, after his body comes back to life, he'll descend into hell, proclaim his victory, and then display and demonstrate that he has been raised from the dead and that he has raised himself from the dead. Scripture talks both ways that he was raised and that he raised himself from the dead. So what ought we to learn from this? We see the, the price that Jesus paid. We see the reality, what he has saved us from. We see the reality of what he has saved us for. And yes, we see the only way in which he makes this salvation our own. He shares his word with us. He shares his sacraments with us. And those words and that sacrament creates that hand of faith which receives the forgiveness he wants. Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Son of Mary, dying on the cross is historical reality. But if that was all we knew, the historical fact, the bare picture even of that event, without any knowledge of the theological import, the fact that Jesus here dies for the sins of all people, which are also the sins of you and of me, those things go hand in hand. Historical reality given and distributed to you and to me in present-day reality, in the gospel, message, and word and sacrament, that this Jesus Christ didn't just die as, he didn't die as some martyr to a cause or a victim of circumstance, that Jesus died for me. And every Christian, every person can say that. And let that truth sink down. Let that truth sink down into your heart, into your hands, into your ears, and into your mind. And then look around, because you will never, ever, ever encounter anybody for whom Jesus did not die. And he wants to bring his life to them, maybe through you and through your words. So let's pray for an opportunity to do that. You can find us Sunday morning at 2250 South Hollandsvania Road in Maumee. You can also find us on YouTube. Just search for Resurrection Mommy. 
Once again, this is Pastor Hagen with Resurrection Lutheran Church and the Raise with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day where the life of Jesus meets yours, the audio home of Resurrection Lutheran Church. God bless your day.